Good morning, Internet. I don't have a cat in my hands. Oh, no! Just means I need to grab this soon. He was just sitting next to me. Um, today, I was requested to make a recording for how to install Linux. Uh, as a result, I've had to teach myself how to use some video editing software. Um, this is all live recorded, by the way. I'm taking multiple takes, but I can't merge the takes together, so this is all in one shot. So hopefully I don't screw this up yet again. Um, I am using my PC's webcam at the moment. I finally got it working with 1080p. How do I look? Oh, uh, I'm still not quite used to where I'm sitting. So, um, the very first thing that you are going to want to do if you want to install Linux on your machine, or even just test it out, is that you're going to want to run it from a flash drive. Uh, it used to be that you could burn a CD. You still can burn a DVD for most Linux distributions, but that takes effort, time, and things that you can't reuse all that easily, and it's much faster to just use a flash drive. So, for materials, you're going to want, one, a machine that can run Linux. Either you can install Linux onto it and you don't mind it, you can dual boot it, which I'll get to in a moment, or three, you can just run it off of a flash drive, as long as you have a computer, basically. Um, this tutorial is assuming that you're running Windows. I'm running Windows 7 myself. You could be running pretty close to any version of Windows. Um, there's other ways of doing this with Mac and Linux. And Well, if you're using a tutorial to know how to install Linux while you're running Linux... What? So, the very first thing I'm recommending is that you install a USB installer. Uh, the one that I am using is called Universal USB Installer. This was recommended on the Linux Mint forums. Um, go ahead and download this. If you scroll down a bit, you will see the Download UUI button. I've already downloaded this ahead of time, as you can see from my downloads. Um, and yes, I'm running Chrome. So go ahead and download this. This is not a very large file, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is download Linux Mint. Um, Linux Mint is the distribution that I'm going to be using for today's tutorial. It's what I would recommend for anybody new to Linux. Really, even people that aren't new to Linux. It's a halfway decent operating system, um, or distribution, I should say. Linux Mint is more beginner-friendly than a lot of other distributions. Um, Ubuntu is another good one to try with. I'm not a huge fan of its user interface, so I tend to use Mint. I actually use Crunchbang Linux the most, but that's substantially more complicated, and I'm not going to get into that in this particular episode. Um, and you want to go ahead and... I apologize, I am cutting off my head. You want to go ahead and click Download. Um, this will bring you to the download page. There are lots of versions of Ubuntu... or of Linux Mint. I apologize, I first did this with Ubuntu. There are a lot of versions of Linux Mint. What I would recommend doing is just grabbing the first one, and regarding whether 32-bit or 64-bit, if you are running a modern computer, as in one that was built within the past, say, five years, just grab the 64-bit one. There's not really that big of a difference. If you have less than 4 gig of RAM, you're probably better off with the 32-bit one, but let's be honest here, it's not that big of a deal. Um, click on the 64-bit one. The version that we're using is Nadia. Uh, Nadia is Linux Mint 14. N is the 14th leveler. leveler. 14th letter of the alphabet. They named theirs after women, apparently. Um, this is the DVD image. It clocks in a little bit under one gigabyte. It's not going to take me that long to download, but I just downloaded this ahead of time. I would highly recommend that if you are familiar with BitTorrent, go ahead and grab the torrent. It is far faster. I was downloading it around 4.3 megabytes per second. I have a reasonably fast internet connection, so... It didn't take me very long. Otherwise, there's lots of mirrors that you can use. Um, choose one that's close to you. There aren't that many in the United States. There are plenty in Europe, though. Um, if you download the torrent file, you'll end up with this little torrent file. If you're not familiar with BitTorrent, I'm not going to get involved with this. Just don't worry about it and download one of the other ones from one of the mirrors. Um, Given the fact that I live in Wisconsin, I would probably end up picking, uh, which one is it? The James Madison University, I believe, was the closest one. I'd have to look that up, and I don't particularly care that much. So, um, after you have everything downloaded, you're going to want to run the Universal USB installer. Uh, it may pop up with a couple of warnings, but in general, it looks something like this. Uh, there will be a license agreement. Um, this is just GNU GPL. You 
pretty much ignore 99% of this. Uh, not like most people ever pay attention to these anyway, but there are a couple of things. I mean, this is using stuff. If you care about the licensing part, I don't know why you're watching this video. Everyone should really care about licensing, but you know what I mean. So, go ahead and agree to it. Um, the very first thing is that we're going to pick a Linux distribution. There are a lot, and a, I mean a lot, of Linux distributions on this list. Um, there's actually some things that are non-Linux distributions. You can even create a Windows 7 or Windows 8 installer this way. Um, in our case, we're using Linux Mint 14. That's actually on the drop-down list. We could download this through the interface, but I have problems with that. It tends to pick a random mirror. I'm not a huge fan. Um, we should browse to the Linux Mint ISO. That's right, I don't have that. So that's... Give me one moment. I never remember what the path is. There we go. Um, this has happened to be where I'm storing it. It'll probably be in like C users, insert username, downloads for you since you just downloaded it. Um, go ahead and click on your USB flash drive. By the way, if it's not plugged in at this point, you probably should have plugged it in before. I should have mentioned that earlier. In my case, my flash drive is the E drive. Um, go ahead and click Format. Keep in mind, this will wipe your drive. Do not have anything on the flash drive that you care about. If you care about anything, stop watching this now, pause it, go grab everything off your flash drive, throw it someplace safe. Um, we could set up a persistent file size for storing changes. Um, in my case, I have a fairly large flash drive, so I'd probably end up storing it uh, about 2 gig worth. Should be 2048, but I don't think this is granular enough. Ah, that's good enough. And then go ahead and click Create. So it'll give you a little warning saying, close everything, make sure it allows it to be formatted. By the way, it's going to be formatted. Um, MBR is Master Boot Record. Uh, you probably don't need to worry about it, but basically, if you have multiple things booting off of this flash drive, this is going to wipe it. It will label your flash drive and then install Linux Mint. Um, I have actually already have this prepped, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Uh, let's go back to that. So, what you want to do from here is that you want to boot up your computer. You'll plug in the flash drive. Um, you may end up having multiple options when it comes to things that you want to boot from. This is going to be very computer specific. I'm actually doing this in a virtual machine uh, that should be visible, and it's now it's visible, sort of. Um, I apparently need to align this slightly better. Um, in our case, I am installing this from a virtual CD-ROM drive, so I'm going to end up hitting that. Um, let's go ahead and do that. And then it will look something like this. It will automatically boot in that many seconds. I'm actually going to stop it just so you can see what else it looks like. Um, this is what happens when you boot the Linux disk, either USB, DVD, whatever it happens to be. Uh, again, I'm using the 64-bit version. You can be using the 32-bit version. That should be fine. There's several options in here. Um, if you don't necessarily trust the computer, like if this is an old computer that you just have lying around, what you probably want to do is run a memory test. The memory test will do several things. Um, it checks for memory issues. This is a fairly common version of memtest. I am going to go ahead and just stop this because we don't need that. In any case, um, damn it, I keep saying that. Another thing that you want, might want to do is do an integrity check. What this does is that this checks to see if the disk is okay. Uh, it takes a long time, but if you're concerned about maybe you have an unreliable internet connection, maybe it took a really long time because you have a slow internet connection, you might want to run an integrity check. I've already done this in the interest of saving on time, and I'm totally cutting off my head again. I've got to get used to this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start Linux Mint. That's going through the boot up process. I'm going to go ahead and click this. Um, boot up process is probably not going to take very long if you're using a USB flash drive. Uh, in my case, it's actually going to take around 20 seconds if I remember correctly. Um, once it's finished booting, it's going to look something like this. Well, once it actually finishes booting, I was a little quick on hitting it. Um, yep, looks something like this. That's not the right screen. That's the right screen. 
There we go. That looks a little bit better. Um, this is what Linux Mint looks like. This is what's called a live distribution, which is that you can run Linux Mint from this distribution. As in, this is a fully functional operating system. I can go down to the menu and open up Firefox and browse through the internet, although I don't know if my VM actually has internet access right now. I think it does. Um, if you are testing things out, try running it first. Um, it helps. It gives you an idea as to whether things are going to be working. It gives you an idea as to what the feel of Linux is. It's going to probably be slower, though. Uh, it depends on the speed of your flash drive. If I was actually running off of my flash drive right now, it would actually be faster than most of my computers because I have a very high-end flash drive. Um, as you can tell, I actually do have internet access on here. This is just Firefox, nothing special. If you run Firefox under Windows, it's very similar. Uh, the main difference being that Preferences is under Edit instead of Tools. It's a Linux thing I don't understand anyway. In order to install Linux, we have this little icon here that says Install Linux Mint. I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to take it a moment or two. So, um, there's release notes. If you want to read them, you probably don't. You're probably new at this if you're watching this. Um, presumably, you would like an English installation. Um, there are many other languages available. I can install this in Norwegian. I can install this in Esperanto. Is there Klingon? No, there's not Klingon. Drat. Um, I speak English primarily, as mentioned in my previous video, so I'm going to install this in English. Uh, you can go continue. It's going to verify that you have everything required. Linux Mint requires about 7 gig of disk space. Um, in order to install, if you're installing this on a laptop, please plug it in. Bad things happen when you install operating systems on battery and the battery runs out. Trust me, I've done this many times. Um, Linux Mint recommends that you're connected to the internet. Pardon me. Uh, mostly because it's actually going to install things, install updates and things like that as you are installing Linux Mint. I am connected to the internet, so I'm going to go ahead and click continue. Um, this is where... Uh, if you have multiple operating systems, you would see an option here that says, um, you know, right over here, I can't even see myself. Um, if you have Windows already, you would probably see an option here that says keep Windows. I believe there's even an option that asks you if you want to keep your data. I've never had that part work properly, but I haven't tried in a while. Um, you have the option of creating multiple partitions. If you're installing this the first time, you're probably not going to want to mess around with partitions. Um, I'm going to just so I can show you what it looks like, because otherwise this is just going to install immediately. Um, partition tables are... The idea is that your hard drive, think of it as a room. It's a great big room, maybe even an aircraft hangar if you have a really large hard drive. Um, typically, you don't use one gigantic room. You use a whole bunch of smaller rooms. Um, partitioning is the idea that you are setting up partitions in that giant room. Uh, in, under Windows, typically you don't have too many partitions. If you're running Windows 7, you typically have three. Uh, you probably don't see them, though. Or, sorry, two under Windows. Forgot about that. Um, you have a boot partition, and then you have your actual Windows installation. Uh, your boot partition is typically about 100 megabytes. You don't ever see it, unless if you're looking for it or if you're really curious like me. In this case, I'm actually installing to a 21 gig virtual hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and click a new partition table. You would have to do this if you have a new hard drive. Yeah, that's pretty much the only time you're going to have to do this. Um, I created a new partition table. Then I'm going to click Add. Now, there are multiple recommendations as to how to do this. If you're running Windows what you would, and you're used to that, what you would end up doing is this. Uh, you want a new primary partition. You want it to be the entire size of your hard drive. Start it at the beginning. There are multiple file systems. The default one is perfectly fine. I'm not going to go through all of these. And then mount point default should be just slash, which is the top one. That's what you would end up doing if you want something very similar to Windows. This is not what I recommend for Linux. Um, what I am actually going to do, go back through, yes, continue. Oh, right. And I am going to create a slash home. First, I'm going to create a slash boot. Slash boot could be about 100 megabytes. This allows you to have a dedicated boot partition, so if you fiddle around with your computer a whole bunch, you don't need to worry about it. Um, I ignore this unless if you're trying to dual boot or things like that. I'm kind of picky about the way I boot things. 
you are also going to want your data partition. Your data partition is where your documents are stored, where everything fun is. I'm going to do this about 12 gig. Yes, I know it's not exactly 12 gig. That would be 12 times 1024. Your user's directory equivalent in Linux is slash home. So I'm going to create a 12 gig partition in slash home. And then I am going to create the rest of this as root. And there I go. Um, this is the more standard way that Linux installs are. Sometimes people have larger boot. Usually people have a much larger home. I'm just going to do that for an example. Anyway, I'm going to go back and create the standard one, which is just erasing the entire disk and installing Linux Mint. It's telling me which drive I want to choose. Um, I only have one hard drive hooked up to this, so it's only going to choose the 21 and a half gig drive. Uh, the entire disk is listed as going to be used. If you had a multiple boot partition, it will have little um, lines saying that this is for Windows, this is for Linux Mint. Then you click Install Now, and then that's while it's installing Linux. Um, we are actually installing. We can keep using this machine while we're doing. It's actually going to ask us questions. I live in the central time zone, so I'm going to go ahead and keep with this. Next, um, Linux will actually ask you all of the configuration questions while it's installing. It's great in that regard. Uh, if you take too long during configuration, it will actually just wait for you. Um, it's asking for a keyboard type. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're either in the US, which means you're using the standard US English keyboard type, or you would know your respective language for whatever keyboard that you want. Um, you can even try detecting your keyboard. Um, Z. No, 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 and you ask. See what I mean? It's not really needed. Just go ahead and choose the English US one, unless if you happen to be a foreign watcher. In that case, choose your respective language. Go ahead and click continue. It's asking for my name and my computer's name. I am Shivers. Um, this is Crin Mint. Yeah, you notice that it will actually detect if computers are on your network. That is a great feature. Believe me, it is a royal pain to try to figure that out. Woo, weak passwords. Yeah, you get the idea. You can use whatever password you want. I am just going to leave this blank because this is only a test. Uh, log in automatically. Oh, actually, Linux Mint requires a password. It's probably good practice to make up a password anyway. Uh, I highly recommend using a set of words mixed together. Uh, you can look up the XKCD comic strip about this. Uh, just look up correct battery horse staple. You'll find it pretty fast. I'm going to click continue, and I'm intentionally delaying because, well, we're almost finished. Uh, once you get past the config, you'll have this little Welcome to Linux Mint thing, and you can go through all of these slideshows. It tells you that this includes Firefox, Flash, and Java. Uh, yes, you can access Hulu from Linux. Uh, you can listen to music and CDs through the program Banshee, and there's audio codecs installed. So you should be able to just pop in a CD and it works. You should be able to just play MP3s and it works. Uh, you can watch videos and DVDs. You cannot legitimately watch Blu-rays under Linux. It's because there's no Linux decoder, last I checked. To be honest, watching Blu-rays on a computer is so horrible that you should probably not bother anyway. Um, there's photo editing software. You have email client, IM client, IRC client, multiple actually. Um, it includes LibreOffice, which if you're familiar with OpenOffice, it's a fork of OpenOffice, so it works very similar. If you're familiar with Microsoft Office, LibreOffice is a free clone of Microsoft Office, basically. It's free and open source. Uh, people are developing it all the time. It's about on the par of Office 2003. Some people like it, some people don't. I'm actually a huge fan of LibreOffice, except for the lack of OneNote. Um, you have PDF options available as well. 
Uh, you have some miscellaneous additional programs. They're very useful programs. There's a lot of programs that you can grab for free from the software manager. Linux is great in that regard. There's a whole bunch of free games. There's free yeah, everything you can think of. There's emulators. Um, you can run Wine, which allows you to run Windows programs inside of Linux. Don't try too many things. It's not necessarily the greatest way to run things in the world. If you already have a Windows machine, you should probably just use that for gaming. Uh, if you have a quick program that you really want to run under Linux, go right ahead. Uh, VirtualBox is actually the software that I'm using in order to do this. VirtualBox allows you to run entire operating systems inside of your computer. It's rather nice. Um, the downside with VirtualBox is one, it requires gobs and gobs of memory. Um, I'm actually using 8 gigabytes of memory in order to do this. And two, it's owned by Oracle, and Oracle's evil. So, um, you can fiddle around with things, you can change settings, uh, it will automatically update things. It's Unlike Windows, it will update not just the operating system, but it will also operate update all of the applications installed. It's pretty nice in that regard. Uh, we have the option of continue testing or restart now. Uh, if we continue testing, we can still access things. I can open up an IRC client, I can open up System Monitor and see how much CPU and memory I'm using, and you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and restart now. I'm also going to switch back to just my camera because the restart sequence is not exactly the prettiest thing in the world. All right, it's rebooting now. Um, if you have any questions about this process, because I've pretty much finished it, feel free to ask. Um, let's see, can we see this? Yeah, that's about the best we can get. It's asking to um, remove your installation media and press enter. If you're doing this through a flash drive, take out the flash drive. If you're doing this through a DVD, eject the DVD, go ahead and press enter, and then it starts booting again. Uh, Linux doesn't exactly take very long to boot typically, although the first boot tends to be the doozy. I have no idea how long this is. This has been about 23 minutes, according to my memory. So this is by far the longest one, but, well, I'm doing a how-to. How-tos tend to be long, and if it weren't for the how much I'm jabbering and the fact that I'm doing this on a VM, this probably would have not taken very long to actually do. Um, Linux Mint is just booting now, and we are just about done. As I said, if you have any questions, please ask me, either in the comments on YouTube or... Facebook, Twitter, Google+, I'm pretty much everywhere. Uh, I like social media, apparently. Congratulations, we are done with our install of Linux Mint. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, not exactly too many cat pictures this time, although I could really change my desktop background to have cats, most likely. I don't think there's one built in. Um, there are tutorials here. There's no news. There's lots of people that can aid and assist you. There we go, now it's actually finished running. Um, bam! Are there any cat pictures? There should totally be default cat pictures. I feel ripped off. There are no default cat pictures. Oh well, we have something green. <laughs>